148% increase in the stock price. That was 2021, 308%. In 2022, and 167%. In 2023 hey guys in this video I'm gonna show you the five things that you look for when you're picking a stock that's a fundamentally sound stock that you want to grow in value over time and I'm gonna start with the first one and that one is that the company because we know stocks are just shares of a company is that the company actually makes money a lot of stocks on the stock market actually don't make money and there's a lot of people i speak to who own stocks and i ask them what they own and they tell me and when they show me the stock or tell me the stock they own i look up the ticker symbol pull up the stock and show them that this company's lost money for the last five years. So, I'm going to go to the 52-week low. These are the stocks that have fallen to their annual low price. And we see a bunch of them down here. A dollar, nine dollars, two dollars. I'm going to go to the first one with a decent amount of money. Let's see. Well, let's look at black line. Ticker symbol is BL. Doesn't come up. Oh, it does pull up. Okay. Let's go to the income statement. And when you go to the bottom, let's look at that. Let's look at two things. First, the earnings per share, 2019 negative, 2020 negative, 2021 negative, 2022 negative. Only in 2023 was it positive. So now I'll go to net income. And in 2019, this company lost $32,535,000. In 2020, they lost $46,911,000. In 2021, they lost $115,161,000. In 2022, they lost 29 million three hundred and ninety one thousand. Only in 2023 did they make money. They made fifty two million eight hundred and thirty three thousand. So there are a few things that you check for when you're buying stock because stock is basically shares of a company and what makes those shares go up the shares go up when more people are buying than selling and you have a lot of smart investors out there they're called institutional investors they invest for organizations and banks and so forth and they are very educated investors. And when the company is fundamentally sound and at a good price, that's when they buy. And you want to be buying with them. So, this is one of the things you look for. If it's a company that's losing money every year, you don't want to buy it. But if it's a company that's making money every year, you want to buy it. So, I'm going to show you a way that you can make sure that you're getting companies or stocks that are making money every year 
And not only that, there are other things to check for as well. I'm going to show you those as well. So, this is the Stock Sage app. And what the Stock Sage app does every day that the market is open is it checks the 52 week low and it pulls up all of the companies that have positive earnings for three or more years from the last five years. So if we look at these companies, or if we look at this list, 191834294505, all positive earnings. We're not seeing any negative earnings. I'm not seeing any so far, but at the most I should see two years. Here's one. This one has one year's negative earnings, and that was 2020, COVID lockdown year. So this app pulls up all companies with positive earnings for the last five years. But we want more than that. The second thing that we want is we want companies where it's not just positive earnings. Like this one has five years, a dollar six, eighty six, a dollar fourteen, a dollar forty six, fifty six. That's fine. They made money every year. The only problem is I don't want them to just make money every year. I want the amount of money that they're making to be increasing every year. I want, so I want those earnings per share, maybe they can fall back one year, but at least four of the five years, I want their money to be increasing. Like this one looks good. 92 cents in 2019, $1.13 in 2020, $1.69 in 2021, a dollar seventy two in twenty twenty two, but in twenty twenty three they fell all the way back to twenty six cents again. Let's see what they're doing right now in twenty twenty four. So I'm gonna click on the ticker symbol, go into the app, and the current per earnings per share is negative. So I don't want that company. So we just looked at the first thing that you're looking for when looking or looking at when looking for stock. You want a company that has positive earnings per share for the last five years. And you want those earnings per share growing at least four to five years. Now, this app, Stock Sage, actually does that for you. The app is only $129 for a year, and it actually pulls up all of the stocks on at their annual low price that have positive earnings for anywhere from three to five of the last five years. This app does that for you. But there are other things that you want to look for when buying a stock as well. And we're going to go through those as well. One is going to be, well, let's jump to the most important one. I'm going to explain what those are for in a second, but let's choose Paycom. Notice in the top of the app, it has the earnings per share for the last five years as well as this year. 
three dollars and fourteen cents in 2019 two dollars and forty nine cents in 2022 three dollars and thirty nine cents in 2020 or 2021 four dollars and eighty six cents in 2022 five dollars and ninety one cents in 2023 and right now it's 2024 what's the current earnings per share eight dollars and nineteen cents so this earnings per share is increasing every year but the app also shows you the high and low stock prices for the years $114 in 2019 and the high was $277.45. That was an increase of 143.37%. Then low price $161.95 and high price $466.86 in 2020. That was an increase of 188.27% low price $299.74 high price $553.97 in 2021 that was an increase of 84.82 percent low price $253.53 and high price $412.37 in 2022 that was an increase of 62.65%. And in 2023, low price $145.22, high price $371.19. That was an increase of 155.60% in 2023. And we can even go to a site like Yahoo, go to Yahoo Finance. And go to Paycom. And they'll give us an estimate of where they feel the stock is going to move up to this year. $190.31. So we type that in here. And it will actually tell us what the estimate is for how high they feel this stock will move up in 2024, the current year, which is 30.72%. Now bear in mind, Yahoo, when they estimate where they feel a stock will move up to, I feel that they're giving you a very conservative estimate because the lowest that this stock has moved up to in the last five years has been 62%, but their estimate only gives you a 30%. But in any event, you get all of this information from the app, but the most important thing Notice that if we look at the low prices, this stock was $114 in 2019, 161 in 2020, 299 in 2021, 253 in 2022, and 145 in 2023. You can't know where a stock is going to fall to as far as its low price by just looking at the price it can pretty much fall anywhere however what you can do is estimate where a stock is going to fall to by looking at the low pe ratio and you have the low and high pe ratios here so the low p ratio in 2019, it was 39, 36, 2020, it was 65, 2021, it was 80, 88. So this one, the P-E ratios are further spread apart. I'm going to go back 
and choose a different stock where the P-E ratios may be closer together. Let's look at MGP ingredients. And if we look at MGP ingredients, their low PEs were 17, 8, 10, 14, 16, right? So I can look at this stock and I can say, okay, if the PE ratio is around 10, I'm definitely going to buy it because it may be at its low price. If it's around 12, I may consider it. If it's around maybe 14, even 16, because we see in 2023, the lowest P ratio was 16.93. In 2019, the lowest P ratio was 17.67. And where's the low P ratio right now? 16.89. And what that means is it can fall more, but it can stop right here and start to move back up. So the P-E ratios give you a much better sense of where that stock is going to fall as far as the low P-E ratio and then start to move back up. If the P ratio's been to 8.84 in 2020, and that was the lowest, and let's say you saw the P ratio was around 8 right now, could it fall further? Yes, absolutely. But we're looking for probabilities. And is the probability that it's going to fall much further? No, it hasn't fallen further in the last five years. So the probability is that if it's around eight, it's moving back up. And the probabilities is that right now, if it's at 16.89, which is lower than it's been in 23, as well as 2019, it may move back up from here. You have to watch it. You can't be sure, but it may move back up from here. It may not go any lower this year. So the second thing that you want to do is check where the current P-E ratio is and where these low P-E ratios are for the last five years so that you can see if this stock is at an affordable price. On the other hand, if I'm looking at the stock right now and it's at a P-E ratio of, let's say, 35, that's higher than the high P-E ratio for this stock in 2023, 2022, um, 2021. 2020 the only year it was higher was 2019 where it went to 42.19 so if you buy this stock with a p ratio of 35 what's it more likely to do it's more likely to move down for the rest of the year than it is to move up for the rest of the year you want to get it when it's moving up not when it's moving down. So that's two things you want to look for when getting a stock. You want positive earnings per share that's moving up, and you want to get it when it's at that low P-E ratio. Now, let's look for, or I should say, let's look at the third thing that we want to look for. Actually, I'm going to come back. I'm going to make this the fifth. I'm going to make this the third. Current assets and liabilities. Now, 
the way that this Stock Sage app works is that it automatically only pulls up stocks whose total assets are more than their total liabilities. But current assets is not automatically higher than current liabilities. That's actually an option in here. So if you click on current assets to current liabilities, now it narrows the list down to only stocks that have current assets that are higher than current liabilities. And what does that mean? Well, once again, I'm going to go in the app, choose a different company. You know what? I'm going to choose a better company. Give me a second here. MGP ingredients. Now, if we look to the debt to equity for this company, we like a debt to equity that's under 200%, but this one is, they're all under 100 2019 39.63, 2020 39.63, 2021 61.65, 2022 55.33, and 2023 63.88. But now we're going to look at the balance sheets. And on the balance sheet, you have two things. You have the current numbers and the total numbers. So first, let's look at the current numbers. First, we have current assets. Everything, let's go up so you can see the years. First, we have current assets. That's everything the company owns. And current liabilities, everything the company owes. Current is in, I'd say, a year or less. Everything that they own, which is like short term, a year or less. Everything they owe, which is short term, a year or less. Notice 2019, current assets 184,206,000. Current liabilities, 39295000 So, when we subtract the current liabilities from the current assets, there's a lot left over, which basically means if this company was to run into trouble, like the companies did during 2020, COVID lockdown years, a lot of companies couldn't open. They couldn't conduct their business. But do they have enough balance, enough money on their balance sheet to be able to continue to function and operate without having to close down? A company that doesn't have that, they may have had to close down. Well... If we look at MGP's um, balance sheet, they were fine. Same thing with 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. All of these years, their current assets very far exceeded their current liabilities on their balance sheet. Now, what about total assets and total liabilities? Well, in 2019, total assets were 322,597,000. And what was their total liabilities? 
$91,553,000. So their total assets far exceeded their total liabilities. When you subtracted one from the other, you still had $231,044,000. We see the same kind of story with 2020, 21, 22, 23. So that's the second thing you want to, or I'm sorry, that's the third thing that you want to check for when you're picking a fundamentally sound stock that's going to grow in value. We said number one, positive earnings for at least three, four, five is ideal of the last five years. We want those earnings to be growing every year. That was number one. Number two, we want it to be a low P.E. ratio. And low P.E. ratios is relative. In other words, a low P.E. ratio for one company may be nine. A low P.E. ratio for another company may be 23. It depends on what that company's low P.E. ratio looks like for the last five years. The third thing is we want total assets greater than total liabilities and current assets greater than current liabilities. Now, what's a fourth thing we're looking for? A fourth thing we're looking for, and all of these things, once again, you find in the Stock Sage app, of which I am going to put the the um, the URL or the website for that app in the description. It's only one hundred and twenty nine dollars a year. The fourth thing you're looking for is on the income statement. You want the profit margin to be, well, greater than 10% is decent. I want even better. I want greater than 20%. So I'm going to turn all these filters off. And let's look at how long this list is. Of all the stocks that fell to the 52-week low that have positive earnings. Pretty long list, right? Now let's turn on the current assets. Greater than current liabilities. Notice the list is still long, but it gets a little shorter. Now, greater than 10% on the income statement in terms of the profit margin. Our long list has just been narrowed down to six. Now let's say profit margin greater than 20%. And when we change it to profit margin greater than 20%, now our list has moved down to two. Now let's look at the earnings per share. Five cents, 10 cents, 26 cents, 37 cents, 49 cents. It's moving up each year. Let's try this one. Pure Cycle Corporation. 20 cents, 28 cents, 84 cents. Then a drop, 40 cents, 20 cents. I'm going to go with D-Lo. Let's see what the current earnings for sure is. And the current earnings per share for D-Lo is 44 cents. But remember, we're still in June, so the year isn't even over yet. Now, we only have three years for this company, but notice 148% increase in the stock price. That was 2021. 308 percent in 2022 and 167 percent in 2023. I'm going to 
scroll down a little bit. Want to go to the income statement. And here we're looking at the income statement. Profit margin. 31.9% in 2021. 25.94% in 2022 and 22.91% in 2023. So I would say that's the fourth thing you're looking for. You want a company that's actually earning money doing what they do for a living. And 20% may not seem like much to you but for a company 20 percent is very good you have a lot of companies out here who earn a lot of money during the year i shouldn't say earn they make a lot of money during the year in terms of sales and revenue but after they pay all of their expenses the amount of money that they keep in actual profit maybe 2%, it may be 5%. If they make 10% in profit, they're doing good. If they make 20% in profit, they're doing pretty well. So, like I said, let's turn off these filters and click a few companies so I can prove my point. Darling Ingredients, good company. Let's go to their income statement. 9%, 8%, 13%, 11%, 9%. And these are solid companies. Let's go to OTEX, Open Tax Corporation. nine percent seven percent nine percent eleven percent three percent let's go to robert half seven percent five percent nine percent nine percent six percent so when you can find a company that's making over 20%, you're doing pretty well. But with this app, that's simple. All you have to do is click on greater than 20%, and it pulls them right up for you. And those are four things we spoke about the positive earnings for those five years. We spoke about looking at the PE ratio to make sure you're buying it at a good price. We spoke about a strong balance sheet, and we spoke about a company that has a decent profit margin greater than 10% or greater than 20%, which this app helps you to find very easily. Lastly, we're going to talk about a company that does stock buybacks. And let me explain what a stock buyback is. A company actually can make money in any of three ways. The first way is the way that we like our companies to make money. That is by doing whatever they do for a living, right? Now, th what does that mean? That means if they sell shoes, you want them to make their money by selling shoes. If they sell TVs, you want them to make their money by selling TVs. What are the other two ways a company can make money? The other way a company can make money is they can just borrow it. And 
There's nothing wrong with borrowing so that they can build to make more money. But when you borrow, you have to pay back. And you have to pay back with interest. So you want your companies to be careful of borrowing. You want them to keep their debts down. And the third way that they can make money is by selling more shares of their stock. They can actually use the stock of their company like an ATM. They need more money, so what do they do? They just keep selling more shares and selling more shares. That's what you don't want them to do. As a matter of fact, you want them to do the opposite. You want to see them buying back their stock. And with this app, you can see that. You can see which companies are buying back shares of their stock, either for the last five years or borrowing one year would mean they bought back shares of their stock for at least three years or they bought back shares of their stock. I'm sorry, they bought back shares of their stock for at least four of the last five years or they bought back shares of their stock for at least three of the last five years. So we see D Local Limited bought back for at least three of the last five years. Let's make it, that's less longer. I'm going to say greater than 10%. And there we go. Let's check out Paycom again. Now, just because the company bought back shares of their stock doesn't mean that's the only thing they did. They may have sold more shares as well. So you want to check that. You want to see that they didn't sell more shares than they bought back. In the case of Paycom, for all five years, it's zero, 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 zero. So Paycom didn't sell more shares of their stock in those five years. But in 2019, they bought back 42528000 worth. In 2020, they bought back 52040000 worth. In 2021, they bought back 65580000 worth. In 2022, they bought back 94,652,000 worth. And in 2023, they bought back 286,618,000 worth. So, those are the five things that you want to check for, guys, when buying a stock a stock that's going to be increasing in value over the years and putting money in your pocket. We're not so concerned about it being a big name that everybody knows. We're concerned about it being a stock that's increasing in value over the years and putting money in our pocket. And those five things are, one, positive and increasing earnings per share every year of those last five years. Two, a relatively low P.E. ratio so that we know the stock is about to move up from that point. Three, we want a strong balance sheet, current assets greater than current liabilities, total assets greater than total liabilities, we want a decent profit margin on the income statement, greater than 10% or greater than 20%. And we want a stock that's not continually selling more, sh a company that's not continually selling more shares of stock, but actually buying back shares of their stock. And 
with all of these things, that process, the process can be a bit tasking. It can be hard to find, but all of it is right here in the Stock Sage app for a simple $129 a month. You can find the um, link in the description. In any event, guys, you have a great night, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.